Hey y'all, Tom, ND3N here, and thanks for dropping in for a Ham Shack chat. This time, we'll be looking at the extraordinary SignalLink external sound card. Specifically, we'll take a look at which SignalLink you'll need to get to match your rig, where you can buy one and hopefully get the best price, what you need to do before you plug it into your rig and computer, and how to do a quick check to make sure that it's at least working so far. Now, I will not be discussing how to use it for digital comms like FT8 or Ham Radio Deluxe, as those will be subjects for future videos. As you probably already know, most rigs today have built-in sound cards, but like the FT891, there are a few that need to use an external sound card. Many hams find the built-in sound cards to be somewhat lacking and will supplement their rigs with the signal link. Adding a signal link ensures that you'll have excellent sound and access to many current and future digital modes. As always, any questions, concerns, observations, or just greetings can be entered in the comments below. Questions? Comments? This is the main Tigertronics.com SignalLink USB main page, and you're going to get all the information that you need on the SignalLink here. All SignalLinks are basically the same, with the exception that they use different cables to connect to your radios. I'm going to click on the product guide up here, and it's going to open this page. Now you could scroll through and go through all the radios. However, I'm going to use the Control F, Control Find feature for the FT891 and just click on the down and it's going to take me right to it. This is the cable that you want to get. All of these begin the same way with the SLU USB or Signal Link USB They're going, please kitty, may I have some more? 6 p.m. 6 p.m. identifies this particular cable. And you can come down here to the 991A and see that it uses the same cable. However, there are other ones. If you have an FT901, well, that's a B4R. I've done a little bit of online comparison shopping, and I found a pretty wide range of prices for this. From the main SignalLink USB page, click on Order Online at our secure web form. Over here under our products, click SignalLink and Accessories. Click the SignalLink USB, and scroll down till we find our 6 p.m. We'll click on that one, bring it up. You'll see the base price is $149.95. They also have a plug and play jumper module for an additional $9.95. These prices are uh, as of today, which is the 13th of January, 2023. I've never had to purchase the plug and play jumper. SignalLink comes with a set of jumper cables that you can plug in and save yourself 10 bucks. So I then went to Amazon and looked it up and the price there is $167.94. You can purchase a package deal where you get the jumper module included for $186.38. They are charging you more for the signal link and 1844 for the jumper module. Finally, let's go to Ham Radio Outlet, my old standby. Again, it's the 6 p.m. and this is the signal link and the price there is $134.95. This is probably also available at most other Ham Radio retailers, but remember that this price includes shipping. Remember, anything over $100 is free shipping from Ham Radio Outlet. And we'll scroll down here and find that the jumper module 
is $8.95 if you want. And again, I reiterate, you really don't need the jumper module. And I will be showing you how to set that up for yourself in a bit. If you're enjoying this so far, please pop that thumbs up icon and give me a like. <laughs> please like me. To see how to place your jumpers, again, we're back on the main signal link page. You're going to scroll down to what's included. This is everything that's in the box. And over here, under jumper wires, there's going to be a jumper setting page. So we're going to open that. Going to click on base or mobile. And I'm going to, rather than drill down, again, I'm going to go Control F, FT 891. The first one that comes up is for that SLAB RJ4, which is not the one we're looking for. So we want to go to the next one, which is for the SL USB 6PM. And this is the 891. You see it's also for the 991. And it is right here. Uh, there's how you want to throw your jumpers. There's four jumpers. Uh, there are six jumpers included with the package, so you got some room to move. None of these notes over here are applicable to the 891 or the 991A or any of these Yesu models. In the box, there's a bag. In the bag is the cable that's going to connect your signal link to your radio. There's also a yellow card, and if you get in there closely, you can see it's got the jumper straps that you need to throw. That's in addition to what you can find online. This is what I'm going to be using to put the jumpers in. But before we get to the jumpers, there's a few other things in there. I'm flipping the signal link over and I'm going to put the feet on it. You do not have to add the feet. But, I like to keep my stuff from falling over and they're just a little stick-on feet. So this will keep your signal link from sliding around on any slick surfaces. Next thing that comes in the box is a little Allen wrench. There are eight screws, four in the front, four in the back. Do not remove the four in the back. I'm going to leave that alone. And I'm going to go ahead and fast forward while I pull these out. So all four screws are out and I'm simply going to pull the front panel off straight out and you can see it come out there we go this is the inside guts of the signal link and right here are where we're going to put our jumpers also in the box was a pack of six jumper wires pre pre-done these wires are 24 gauge solid wires and if you ever have to go out and make your own that's uh, what you're going to want to make sure you're using. Uh, it has to be 24 gauge. Less than that will not fit properly into the jumpers. More than that will harm the jumpers. If you look right along this side here, I've the top three are ground, ground, and ground. Then I've got two open ones, and then push to talk, mic, and speaker. These are the ones that we're going to do. So I'm going to start by installing one of the grounds. I'm just going to do the ones on the side there. I like to use needle nose plier to put these in. So we're going to start by from the bottom on up with the speaker. So that's on the very bottom, in this corner, just like that. You can see that on the, on the picture here, there's a little notch. So you just 
Make sure you're on that one. And then we're going to go with Mike. There we go. Then push to talk. There we go. And finally the ground. The three, three on the top are our ground. So I'll go one, two, three down. There we go. So that's, that's how we're starting off. I got all of those in and I'm now I'm going to connect them to the other side. I'm going to take the mic, which is the second one here, and I'm just going to give it a little bend. And that is going to number one. And you see there are numbers right along there. They've, they've done a good job of labeling this. Two is the ground. So we'll bring that one over. Three is the push to talk. And the final one is our speaker, which comes up here to five. There we go. Everything is in there now. So I've got my four jumpers done. Of course, you can bypass all that by getting the plug-in jumper, but doing it this way takes a minute or so, but you save yourself around 10 bucks. Now, we're going to insert it all back. You have to make sure that it's going in that way. So you got your USB, there's the USB cutout. You go into the lowest slot, let me just show you. So you can see these are slotted in the back. You go in the lowest slot that these will fit into. And this is going to snap right on. Well, not really snap, but it'll fit snugly over there. And through the magic of video, the screws are reinstalled. If this info has been useful, please share. Sharing is good with their friends who might be interested in the signal. The first thing we're going to do is connect our radio to our signal link. And to do that, we take this cream colored cable. This end goes into our rig and we're going to put it right here, which is our data port. And it goes in, it's got a little key in it. The key's on the top. So just line that up, bring it in. And it's going to be a little snug. That's fine. Just hold your rig down and push it in. So now we're set there. Now we're I'm just going to quickly kind of route this around, put my radio back the way it belongs. And by the way, yes, make sure that your power supply is off and that your radio is off while you're doing this. Now we're going to take our signal link and we're going to place this right here in the conveniently shown radio port. The other cable that we have, is a standard USB. Uh, I think a lot of people call this a printer cable. However, to shorten the time on this video, I've already plugged the other end into my computer. So we're just going to take it and plug it right in here. And now we're ready to go check it out and make sure it works. To verify that your signal link is connected, you want to turn your signal link on and it's pretty much plug and play. My system is Windows 11, but it's pretty much the same as before. We're going to right click on that and click on Open Volume Mixer. And when you come up here, you'll see the output device and the input device are both set to USB audio codec. On the input device, you should see the same thing. There it is, USB audio codec. When we start getting into other modes like Ham Radio Deluxe, some contest software, WSJTX, I'll show you how to come down here and specify that these are used for that. Now I want to point out that I do have other videos coming out here where we will come in here and adjust this better uh, when we get there. Uh, for example, I would recommend putting this down to about 50%. This will keep everything from overdriving. One thing that I appreciate in any purchase I make is quality. As I've noted before, Yesus are built like a tank and can take more rough handling without affecting performance than just about any other brand out there. The signal link falls into the same category and I've always been impressed. This isn't my first signal link. I've owned them since I bought my first modern rig, a TS-440S in around 1987. 
Since then, I've probably owned 10 or 12, and every time I sold the rig that I was using it with, the signal link I bought went along with the purchase. One might think that I'm a bit of a fan, but when you find something that work as well as these do, you stick with them. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Please join our team. And to make sure you get notified about those future videos that I've been talking about, ring that notification bell. 73 for now, and thanks for spending your valuable time watching. As always, I am at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out.